Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Finn. Uh, and I work for well, I own Magnitude Surveys, which is a specialist geophysical contractor based in Bradford. We've been trading for four years, and in that time, we've gone from three full time founding partners to 21 full time staff. Uh, that poses some unique challenges. We have a unique data collection system, which means we can't take staff in um, off the street or from other competitors because they've never used that kind of kit before. Um, and we don't have field and office staff. All of our staff rotate around, which also creates unique challenges. This is a quick screenshot from our scheduling uh, spreadsheet. You can see that there's staff rotating in and out of the field and the office all the time, um, which creates a lot of unique scheduling challenges. Challenges with project oversight and also challenges with continuity of projects. But it has better opportunities, especially high staff morale. Our staff are very happy being in and out of the office all the time rather than being out in the field cold and wet all the time. You get lots of eyes to look at data. Everyone has different eyes. Everyone sees different things in, in data sets. So the more eyes we have, uh, the more useful that is. And we can develop new ideas, new systems continuously, um, which means we can grow faster. We can do more exciting things. Um, but this talk is on large-scale infrastructure, infrastructure projects, things that maybe 10 years ago would have been unheard of. Uh, we had stuff like the Stonehenge Digital Landscape Project, which started talking about square kilometer surveys. Um, and now they almost seem like the norm. This is quick. I don't know if you can see it in the numbers at the bottom, but this is a quick extract from our, our project database. You can see that we've done about 3,500 hectares uh, on sites between 0 and 50 hectares. We've done about 1,000 hectares on sites that are between 50 and 100 hectares. We've done 2,000 hectares of, uh, on sites that are 100 plus hectares. And then we've done about two and a half thousand hectares on sites that are thousand plus hectares. So these big projects are becoming more normal, uh, and they have they have unique challenges. We take quickly our small projects; they're relatively easy. You know, anything up to up to a square kilometer, a couple of weeks survey, fine. A couple of weeks of reporting, all okay. One person can look at all that data. One person can can report on all that data. One person can be out in the field all the time one person can uh, manage any oversight of that project. When you start getting into these bigger sites, then more than three weeks, that messes up part of our scheduling. Our, our staff aren't out in the field for more than three weeks at a time. So we have to have different people running, uh, running surveys on sites. Um, there's too much data for one person to be able to analyze and report on. So we have to find new ways of uh, multiple people to report on the same data sets um, without reports being piecemeal and you being able to tell that different chapters have been written by different people. Um, the same issue happens with project officers. You know, if a client wants to ring up and speak about a project, it might be that that person is now out in the field collecting data. So they might have to speak to someone else, the different person to the person that spoke to last week. Uh, and the same sort of happens with project managers to an extent. Um, so I'm going to take one individual fairly massive project. Uh, today we have surveyed 907 hectares on this site. Uh, the total site is about two and a half thousand hectares. Um, those 907 hectares are 998 individual survey events. An individual survey event is a site or a field for a day. Uh, every survey event has a cost and a time associated with it from our clients. Um, this is 440 survey days, and it's also about 440 reporting hours today as well. So we're spending about the same amount of time reporting on this data as we are collecting it. Um, and it's also just shy of 500 gig of raw data. This is just magnetometer data, but it's just shy of 500 gig of raw data. Um, even just trying to measure the size of this folder took about half an hour for the Windows Explorer to, to keep populating. Um, so how do we try and undertake these, these giant surveys? Key thing is get in and out fast. If you've got 998 survey events, you've got 998 landowners to keep happy, you've got 998 different site conditions, different crop heights, uh, and 998 different access requests, different phone calls, emails to people. And site conditions are incredibly fleeting. Landowners are even more fleeting. 
Um, and finally, be prepared for anything. Uh, you never know what's going to happen when you get to site and you need to be able to try to do as much as possible, as quickly as possible. So, how do we do that? Uh, best option, in my opinion, is to have systems that can adapt to any survey environment. You might not know what's good, what you're going to see when you get to site. So if you, if you can take your same bit of kit, in which case, in this case, our jetpack system in the top left, which can survey in rucksack mode, it can be put on the back of a uh, hand towed car, you can sling an EM underneath it and you collect more data at the same time, or you can show the same system behind a quad bike. So you can take the same, exactly the same kit to all of your sites, all of your magnetometry sites, uh, and no matter what access arrangements you're faced with, no matter what ground conditions you're faced with, you can do, you can do the survey. Collect data fast, and collect as much data as, as possible at that time. Collect great data from the start. Don't use old sensors. Use the new, latest and greatest systems that can collect more data, better data, um, so that you don't have to go back and redo anything later on. And perform live QA on that data as you're collecting it. So this is our, um, our portal, our field portal. So this is a website that our field teams can access while they're in, while they're in the field from a 4G tablet. And it automatically processes their data. It's stored, it streams back to our office so they can run the data, they can check things, they can bring it up in a CAD plan on their, uh, on their tablet, they can see if they've got any gaps, they can see if they've got any errors with sensors, anything. Uh, and they can do that before I'm even aware they're in the field. How do you process all of that data if you've got 500 gigabit? Don't, don't even think about it, geoplot will fall over. Just have a server rack that just processes it all for you. You're collecting so much data that you don't need to do any fancy processing, and you can just pre-process it all, you can auto-process 99% of that 500 gig of data um, without, without any human intervention. How do you then go to interpret and report on that data? Well, that, that is really where it gets challenging. If you've got 500 gig of data, ArcGIS, QGIS, CAD, they don't stand a chance of bringing any of that in. Um, if you're bringing in your 500 gig of raster images, then you've also got XY traces, you've got GNS traces, you've got polygons, you're trying to edit multiple shape files at the same time. It's all it's all hideous. Um, so how do we deal with that? We make special rasters that tile, um, which means that when you load in that raster, that 500 meg raster or that 500 gig raster, it still loads instantaneously and you can pan around in it. As long as you maintain network access, it's all okay. Um, we build pyramids for all of that data initially so that all of that stuff is done before ArcGIS or QGIS gets anywhere near it. All of this stuff speeds up our ability to look at this data. How do we go about interpreting any of it? So we, rather than using any shapefiles or DXFs, everything is done in a database. So our staff log into that database, they can draw shapes, they can draw shapes, they can draw polygons, they can draw polylines, points, and all of that data is stored alongside their username when it was edited, and that's all interrogatable. Anyone, you can have 20 people looking at the same data set at the same time, they can all draw the same feature and it'll still exist. Uh, it won't crash your GIS and insist that you can never open that shapefile ever again. Same for geotiffs. They, rather than necessarily bring them in as individual geotiffs, you can store them all on a server, you can bring them in as a web map, web map service layer. That way you can access it from a tablet. I can look at the web map service layer from my phone and I can see these layers and all of these layers, these different magnetic, magnetic layers or mapping layers all in a, in a layered environment easily. So then, You've got all your data in, how do you then go about trying to interpret 900 hectares of data and make it look like one person has interpreted all of that? Um, so you start by looking at as much data as possible. So we have gradient data and we have total field data. And you can see different features in those data sets, but that's all collected with the same sensor. Um, same again, different features show up in the total field and the gradient. So the more data you can look at, the better your interpretation can be. And then you do collective interpretation. So you print out those interpretations, you draw on them, you mark on them. You sit down with colleagues with printed features or digital features. You can all edit this collaboratively. And you have as many eyes looking at those individual sites as possible so that you can pick out as many features as quickly as possible. Um, enter it all into your database with descriptions and field types. And then you can build all of that into wiki systems. So you can turn those database systems into bits of free text that fit into wikis and then somehow turn all of those wikis back into a uh, word file at the end and I've only got 30 seconds left so I think this will be discussed a little bit more in the 
topics that, that come after me, but then how do you deal with the, that data afterwards? If you've got 500 gig of data and you try to send that to the ADS to archive it, they can deal with a maximum of 300 files, and we have 202,604. Uh, they can deal with files that are less than 10 meg in size, we have 500 gig, uh, and 10 hectares or fewer, and we have 900 hectares. So that is, if you, anyone has got any suggestions on how to deal with that, that would be appreciated. Uh, thank you for listening. If you want to ask any questions about data processing or anything, please feel free to email me. If you want to ask any questions about archaeology, please email the people at the bottom. Thank you.